In this video, we're gonna attempt to repair this 720 horsepower Audi R7 within 24 hours of physically working on it. Now, I've time warped to the very end of this video, so it's all repaired, but guess what? This thing has quite the story, including me buying a box load of parts, shipping it down to Arizona, getting this thing on its feet, and I really don't wanna spoil the rest of the video, so smash that like button and enjoy. That was like a quarter, quarter power right there. I didn't even give any power, like literally. What the heck? That's unreal. Chiching mission accomplished. Boys, we were on like a three day crunch in order to get all these parts needed to get the Audi R7 on its feet. Now, the only thing I'm wishing right now is that I didn't make any mistakes and uh, that all of these parts fit. So we got the brake line because it's ripped, knuckle, axle, two lower control arms, spring seat, and pyro fuse to get that bad boy started up. I'm hoping and crossing my fingers that these all parts fit and I have no extra issues with getting that car on a trailer. Now, if any of these parts don't fit or we can't get the wheel on the vehicle, everything I'm doing right now is completely pointless. Let's get everything packaged up and shipped down to Arizona because I'm gonna be there in three days and I hopefully this package here gets there in three days. Although today is Saturday, end of the day, Sunday, not sure if they ship on Sunday, Monday and Tuesday I'll be there. So let's go ahead and get this packaged up. All right, boys, I uh, snuck my wife's scale out of the room to measure this box here. Now, all geared up and in shoes and everything, I am 203.2. Oh, Let's see, my guess is that thing weighs around 55 pounds. Oh, that's a heavy boy. 203.2, 250.8, 203.2, so 40. 748 pounds right there. A box this size here, 48 pounds, I think it's gonna be around $65 to ship it. Now we put this back. Well, my shipping quote wasn't off by much, except for that's coming the 25th. Right now it's the 20th. We're gonna be there the 23rd, 24th. So uh, we need that sooner. Let's see if we can find a different app. Well, got the label, ended up being not 65, $133, but it is what it is because basically it's a second day air for a big boy package like that. Anyways, let's get it packaged up, taped on and shipped off. All right, boys, we made it. Past security, everything's good. I got a couple of tools with me in my backpack, but nothing crazy. I only grabbed some like special tools, like triple squared and a big Allen for the axle nut or the actual bolt. But anyways, I'm hoping that the guy that owns the R7 has a basic set of tools. If not, I will go buy a basic set of tools and then probably return it or something or ship it back to Florida once I'm done using it. But that being said, let's hope that this flight is all good and safe and gets us there on time. Yeah, Danny? Yep. Should have stayed Were the signs I ignored Can I help you That's a All right boys we're off We saw brilliance when the world was asleep There are things we can have but can't keep if they say 
All right, boys, waiting for our Uber. Gonna get to the Airbnb, get some sleep, get some shut eye because I had like three hours of sleep last night. I'm exhausted to the bone. But thank God we made it. Everything's safe and sound. Danny's still in one piece. Me too. We're chilling. Dang, son. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Little Tesla Model S. What is this? How you doing? Yes, Tim. Good, how are you? Oh. Little RSQ8 pulled up to pick us up. A little launcher in the SQ8. Let's see. Whoa. That's a Sunday right there. Snap. Danny out there. Oh. Yo, chill. <laughs> I like the roughness. Like when it hits these little things, yeah. it actually feels nice and tight. Woo wee. Oh, there she is, huh? Hey, yo, you didn't tell me the wheel was ripped off. Just kidding. <laughs> you know, I'm very familiar with these. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm fourth one. Oh, shit. Here we go again. The Alcantara bag is ripped, dude. That's bad, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. Alcantara bag. You know, does he have one? Uh, he has a carbon steering wheel and an Alcantara cover for me to walk. Cover? Yes. A bag. It's a bag. It's a cover. You take off the cover, you put a new one on. Uh, I'm gonna slap that bad boy on. What do you think? Come here. Nice seven. Come here. Let's see if we have anything worse than we thought. I mean, it right looks. Now. It looks pretty decent. Oh, fudge! The coilover is bent. Is it? Yeah, it's bent. No. How much is that? For like six bills, one piece. Ah. Not bad. Run it up. Yeah. Anyways, I think 24 hours time we're gonna rebuild this. Like literally physically working 24 hours. Except for I'm not sure about this spot right here because this might take us a little bit longer because we have very limited amount of tools. So axles ripped out, everything's just- Yeah, ripping. all these parts. Everything. There's a brake line, they cut it, bro. Look at that. That's not ripped, that's cut. I'm telling you, this auction of whoever did this is savages, bro. This is cut too, bro. That's not ripped out, look at that. It's broken. Oh, that's broken. That's broken. That's broken. Looks like it snapped. Bro, look at that coilover. I'm not sure. Is that bent? Really? We'll pull it out and we'll see. But if that's bent, I mean, we're $600 down. But if it's not, we're really lucky. Besides that, these things are super expensive and they're safe. That's safe. What bags? You said they're not airbags. It wasn't airbags. I don't know. We'll see. That's not damaged, and he has all the rest of the parts here, but they're damaged, obviously. But still, look at this towing wreck. This because in the pictures it was a wrecked, and he said this car looked a lot better than it looks right now um, because more, a lot more damage was done from the towing and from going from uh, from auction to towing to shop and stuff like that. I'm used to these bad boys, you know. So basically, this is the tools we have. We had this. We're gonna go buy a jack. Yes, sir. We're gonna go buy a jack, and we're hoping that that's gonna be enough. To do all the thing. Ooh, I'm familiar with this bad boy. Got the same one. How close? Hey, Victor, how close is a uh, parts store? Or not parts store? Very close. Like Harbor Freight close, yeah? Yeah, a couple of miles. Okay, then we're not gonna buy anything. We're just, if we need to make a run, we make a run, you know? Let's go buy a jack. Cool. All right, boys, check out this little Airbnb we got. Pretty sick. So we got the truck, shout out to the guy that sent me the R7, he let me use his truck. We got a little upstairs, look at this. It's all made out of steel. Pretty sick, rustic, modern look. Nice little patio up here to chill. Boom, and then go back down. I'll show you guys inside the Airbnb. So it's basically what I'm assuming is like a garage that was converted into an Airbnb. Look at this, ready, pull. Yes, sir. Boom. Got the bed, got a laptop, we're gonna be working. And then we got a little hangout room. Danny boys are chilling here. Got the TV there. And then we got the bathroom. Nice little modern bathroom. Everything's concrete, but I guess it's Arizona. The floors never get cold because I've heard that this year they had one, over 100 days of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, no less temperature, which is absolutely insane. But we're gonna change 
and uh, we're gonna go check out that R7. on a little log. <laughs> all right, so here's the order of operation what's gonna happen right now. My package is still in the way, but I can get a little head start and tear all of this stuff apart. That way, when my package does come, we can install all the parts. Danny boy is gonna go ahead. Holy moly. Wow. Danny boy is gonna go ahead and take a head start on this, tear apart everything here, because I need the caliper, I need the, um, what is it called? Yeah, the, you know, what you know this the thing, rotor. the rotor and a couple of parts from that. And then when my package comes, I know exactly what I need to install in order to get this thing back on its feet. And hopefully, just only hopefully, this thing still starts up and still runs and has no issues whatsoever. It doesn't look like any of the coolant was out of the vehicle. Looks like we're good over here. This thing is stage two, full Miltech exhaust. It should be around 700, seven, plus, 700 plus crank horsepower, which you guys know I had a stage one RS7 and that thing did 2990 to 60 with a 1094 quarter mile. So I'm not sure, but this thing feels like it's a lot faster just by those uh, tuning numbers and, and the mods that it has already. So I'm super pumped. Let's get this thing on its feet and then schedule a dispatch back to Florida. A couple of quick specs about the car. It's a 2016 with 36,000 miles. And obviously you guys know it's stage two. We got an aftermarket steering wheel for it over there. It's it's a beautiful package. It's, it's, one of the, it's a combination that I would actually like to keep. I can't promise anything because we are building a shop. So things like this will be bought and sold pretty quick for the right amount of money. But for now, the condition of the vehicle is absolutely perfect. Uh, we do have one airbag blown here, here, and a knee airbag, which are already ordered. So. Um, I think this thing will be on its feet very soon. And um, with that being said, I mean 24 hours. <laughs> right as we were working, UPS pulled up. Let's go get our package. Well, let's see, <laughs> let's see this package. If it, if it survived, what it needed to survive. I think it's fine, yeah. Oh gosh. You got a knife or something? Oh, I taped that bad boy hard, dude. All right, we got a brake line. We got everything here, we got a knuckle. Oh. No, we good, Danny. All right, boys, we're back in business. Let's get all this jazz installed. Ooh, this is gonna be a tough one. But honestly, it kind of, it's kind of fun for me to do this outside of my comfort zone. You got it? Yes, sir. We had a secret key that didn't fit, or we didn't have the secret key, but we made it work with a little socket and some pounding. Well, we got everything off. It took about one and a half hours, maybe two hours to get everything off. We're here to make this thing a roller and put on a, on a truck. Now, I'm not sure if this is good. I just realized that this is not a KW coilover, it's a KW sleeve, which actually, this is a stock strut and it still has the DRC system, which luckily it hasn't been um, opened up. So the, the shocks are still filled with DRC. Now I'm hoping that the shock is not bent because I don't want to fill the DRC system again. You guys remember what I'm talking about. but. From here on out, let's go ahead and put the new components on and get this thing fired up. Yeah, look at that. We got a full Miltech exhaust, downpipes, custom stage two tune. Ooh, I can't wait to hear what this sounds like. One ton, 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 ton. Engine start, no problem. Five minutes. Tidin, 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 problem. Engine kaput.
So, new pyro fuse is on. We got a little jump box here. Let's see if this bad boy is enough juice to actually get it. Dude, insane. <laughs> boys well it's dark out here and that's gonna be it for the night tomorrow we're gonna finish up we we'll go ahead and start looking for a dish patch get this thing back to florida all right boys day two we got two main challenges first of all making sure that this brake caliper goes onto this and the brakes are bled and function properly number one number two is we got a big old h19 size allen key here which goes into the axle bolt right over here now the goal is to get this axle bolt off and onto here, which may be a little challenge because as you, can, you guys can see, it spins. So I'll have Danny figure that one out. All right, boys, we got it on its wheel. Now we need to go to the store, get some brake fluid. Amazingly, all the tools we had and everything we brought was enough to get this thing back together, which is pretty crazy. Brake line in, everything is in here, all installed. We do have a, a wire that's ripped off that goes to this sensor right here. And then we have some chewed up wires over here, but I'm gonna do that stuff back at home, get it properly soldered up. Let's head down to the store, Danny. Yeah, Let's okay. get this thing running, send it. That's that cheap stuff, huh? No, I ain't the cheap stuff. It's more expensive. What you mean? It's more expensive than this one. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna get this bad boy. I think so. You just pump it out. I think we're all finished up here. I ran out all of the air. There's so much brake fluid we went through. Make sure that the whole system is fully charged with brake fluid. Now, the brake thing up here is full and this thing is pretty low. I'm saying maybe here. So I think we're pretty solid. If something, we're gonna do another bleed procedure um, if we feel any kind of funniness with the brakes, but I think we did everything pretty good. Why are you cranking it so much? We're gonna send it, you know? If everything works good, we're gonna send it. You guys know I'm notorious for sometimes forgetting to tighten wheels, so we're not risking it here. And this thing is 700 horsepower, and if everything functions, I wanna see what, what, what kind of juice this thing has. This is the first time since last Christmas, not this one that was just a couple of weeks ago, the year before, that this car has been on its own feet which is kind of crazy, but that's what backyard boys do. Yeah. Litter in the backyard. Backyard? Yes, sir. It's where we, this is where we do it, man. See the wheel, this wheel and that rear wheel is a little bit different style. I think that's like an alpha, I don't know, S6 or something. I don't even know. It looks similar, but I got all four of these. So these are original R7 wheels. I'm gonna slap them on, call it golden. Bad. I love you.
Well, would you look at that? First time in over a year this thing rolls. Man, that thing looks sick, dude. That thing looks sick. Danny out there is testing out the brakes with the Red Bull can on top, and he butchered the Red Bull can. He's gonna be so confused right now. Yo. How are the brakes? Good. They seem fine? Don't be, don't be doing anything dumb, but <laughs> you dropped the Red Bull can. Oh, it's right here. Nice. Nice. What'd you say? They roll away? No, it's right here. Look at this thing. Bro, looks absolutely beautiful. So, look at that. Woo wee! Look at this. This is now an operating vehicle and it can drive onto a tow truck and get home back to Washington. Man, white is so sick. White is so freaking sick. Yo, what do you say? What do you say we zip tie everything on the front and take this thing for a little spin? Send it. Take this thing for a little spinner. Not too long because it's obviously dismantled. So I feel a little bit of power. That was like a quarter, quarter power right there. <laughs> I, didn't even give, I didn't even give any power, like literally. Okay, I'm gonna put it back in comfort because I can't drive around the neighborhood like that, bro. That, that lady got kids right there. I feel bad now. Let's see if comfort does anything different. Highly, highly doubt it, but who knows? Hit it. Heard the turbo, no gnarly backfires. Mm, I like that. This thing's insane. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's insane. Like he said, two seconds for it to go fast. Yeah, dude, that's gnarly. Holy crap. <laughs> you hear this pool? Bro, like pay, pay the homie. We're gonna do it. Let's go. Yeah, he's taking a video. He's taking a video. That's freaking gnarly, dude. Bro, I want to launch this thing. I want to go absolutely send it, but. Alrighty boys, we are done here in Arizona. We got the car all loaded up and locked up. Basically, zip tied the front bumper, all the extra parts he gave us inside the vehicle, put a new battery on it. So now everything works. Look at that, we got the wheels, we got all the little shields, original downpipes and everything. I went ahead and peeled the tint off on this taillight and honestly, it looks so much better in my opinion. I mean, to each their own, but for me, that's absolutely beautiful. Now the goal is that by the time this thing here gets back to Florida, we already have all the parts. So as soon as it hits Florida, we can assemble this thing and send it off to the paint shop. Funny little thing is from the front at a specific angle, you can't even tell that the other headlight's missing because this one is tinted so dark. <laughs> Anyways, I will catch you guys and this car back in Florida. And with that being said, Arizona has been good to us. Everything's been super successful. Wow, thank God. Eleven forty nine. My baby came here. It's gonna be a loud cold start. <laughs> it's gonna be quite loud. What was that? 
All right, you're good. Good? Yeah. What is it, 1150? Tolium? Dude, I hope it's not in dynamic, because if it's in dynamic, it's gonna be so loud. Please be in comfort. And yeah, I, I just don't enjoy it. It's not an enjoyable experience for me. Yet. All right, boys, my baby is here in Florida with me. Now, whew, I've already went ahead and started working on transferring over all the computers from the broken headlight to the good headlight. Everything is transferred over. Another thing I went ahead and did is transferred over the airbag cover to the new airbag. So that's all done for the carbon fiber steering wheel we got here. Look at that thing, woo! That thing looks absolutely sick. Next thing on the list is to put in some airbags and get the, all the airbag faults off the vehicle. Hopefully we can clear all those codes. So I'm um, pretty excited because I know these RS7s very, very well now. And while this thing was getting shipped here, it took about a week, I got just about 95% of the parts. On Monday, I should have my front bumper and technically it should be paint ready. So I'm super, super pumped because this thing is insane. And I just want to absolutely rip it and show you guys the excitement behind the steering wheel. Let's continue working. Well, I just realized that in order for us to actually get the airbag light off, Audis have a thing where once they get into an accident, all the seatbelts lock up. As you can tell, you can literally play an acoustic song and those bad boys are so, so stretched out. But let's go ahead and get the bags that we have, which is the knee bag changed out, the current one changed out, and all the seatbelts off and sent out to L&D Solutions for repair. Once again, shout out L&D Solutions. You guys are absolutely amazing. Any, any seatbelt repairs or post-collision work, reach out to them. All right, well, I got that current airbag in, the knee airbag Danny got in. Now I wanna go ahead and install the driver airbag, which is right over here with this nasty steering wheel that the guy gave to me for free. So um, I love this. This looks absolutely beautiful. Let's install this, scan the car, and see if the only airbag codes we have left are the seat belts. Well, nothing to be surprised of, an Audi with 123 fault codes. Obviously it's been wrecked and a lot of these fault codes have been repaired. As you can see, the passive, passive, passive means that the code is gone. Now we have the airbag module, so front, all those are passive. Driver side, rear seatbelt, passenger side, rear seatbelt. Then we got two, that's two. And then we got one here, data bus error value received. Don't know what that is. Multiple collision, interesting. The front ones are not bad. Passenger side rear and, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clear all this. See, we had 123, let's get down to, uh, let's see, 50. <laughs> A few moments later. Look at that. 34. No, 33. It's still clearing more. Okay, so we already fixed a lot of stuff when we got the suspension stuff done. I just wanna see the airbag system, that way I can install this, uh, basically, f you know, finish off installing the interior and then take off the two rear seat belts, send those in. Dude, what? What? We're down to 13 from 123. Crazy. Later. All right, this is weird, but it seems like we only need to do the two rears. Let's go ahead and take those off and send them in. <laughs> That's crazy. But, wow. All right, put it all together.
All right, so this is actually quite an interesting one. Went ahead and pulled the wheel off, and this e-brake servo was just sitting like that. It broke off right here. I started plastic welding it just for my own curiosity on how this material would plastic weld because I always had a difficult time plastic welding it. We're not going to be using that one. We're going to pick one up from parts box. But from the impact of the wheel going up, it broke that piece off. And that's why we had the issue on the dashboard saying something with the parking brake. But anyways, let's go ahead and put this fender on and uh, get the gaps lined up because that's kind of important, making sure everything here is in place before we drop this thing off at the paint shop. Also take a look at the savages that tore this thing apart. Bro, they just cut everything. They literally didn't care about <laughs> unscrewing it. They just yank, took everything off. We do have a fairly fresh fender, probably one of the best condition fenders I've gotten for these RS7s. Look at this thing. No damage whatsoever. We're gonna go ahead and slap this bad boy on, set all the gaps up. All right, boys, so we got the car assembled to a point where we can drive it, put the fender on, lined up the gap, put the headlight in. I'll show you guys that just in one second. Uh, we're pulling up to Vitali, the guy that painted my uh, blue M240i, and we're gonna get a quote. I'm guesstimating it's about $1,000 for everything. Uh, we need a rocker panel repair and paint, I guess, three panels up front. We'll see how many blends and whatnot he wants to do in order to make sure we get 100% quality. But right now, this thing is driving like a dream. Look at that, it's terrible. Woo. So we just pulled up to Vitali's shop, Car Tech Pro, and um, we just kind of walked around the car a couple of times, and Vitali's like, hey, we gotta blend this door 100% because we got a black fender, white door, and it's just it's too nice of a car to butt match and risk any kind of color difference. So we're gonna blend that door over there, and then we're gonna blend the hood as well because obviously we don't wanna butt match that. Now, the rocker panel needs a repair, and Vitaly's like, dude, you might as well blend this fender because the bumper is going to be touching it over here and it's like only a $200 difference to blend or not to blend. So at that point I was like, all right, let's blend the fender. And then I took a closer look and realized that this door was previously painted by somebody that shouldn't be painting. So we're going to go ahead and blend this door as well. So basically everything's getting painted from the two doors forward which that means the estimate is a little bit higher, but still fully reasonable. And since it's such a nice car with low miles, I have absolutely no issues doing that. We're gonna go ahead and wait for Vitaly. He's gonna come out and tell us the final quote to get all that painted up and looking brand new. So what are you thinking? <laughs> I think it should be like 1600 from bumper, fix the dents. Got it, yeah, yeah, I forgot I to mention the dent. Panel. Yeah, we have a dent here and this dent could have done could have been PDR'd, but we got a paint crack, like a hairline crack. And then there's some paint crack right over here. It's closed, but yeah. So Vitaly's gonna address that, that, and paint the whole entire front of this vehicle, including the blends on the two doors, obviously, because somebody's obviously not painted this door properly. So 1600 bucks, I think that's fully fair to have a front end looking absolutely fresh on something like this. What are we saying, next week? Yeah, next week. All right, boys, I'll see you next week then. <laughs> Ooh-wee! All right, so take a look at this. Vitaly went ahead and slicked everything in and it's looking absolutely gorgeous. Front bumper all slicked in with the sensors. We got the rocker panel up there. It was repaired right over here. Looks perfect. Fender right here. Now, the car. Hmm. I'm so happy I blent everything onto the doors, making everything look absolutely perfect. Now take a look at this right here. Woo wee! Look at this. Boom. It is so perfect. It is so bright. It literally hurts your eyes. All the little dents, imperfections, cracks in the paint, anything it had, went ahead and got them all repaired. Now it's time for me to assemble the doors, assemble the car roughly, so I can take it home and do the final assembly at home. So let's go ahead and do that and get out of Vitaly's hair.
Well, we got the car home and it's all in one piece, safe and sound. I've been just kind of contemplating to tell you guys um, <laughs> what's been happening the last, I don't know, three days, let's say, two, three days, not 100% sure. So me and my wife, we just came back from vacation. We had six day vacation. And while that was happening, first of all, my Traeger, if you guys don't know what a Traeger is, is basically a grill on pellets, it's like an electric grill. It's pretty expensive, about $600, $700 got stolen, so that's interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, browse around Facebook Marketplace and a couple places, see if I can find it because, yeah, if I do find it, I'll, I'll take a video for you guys. I've never had anything stolen from me and it feels quite uneasy, it's just weird. It's, just, it's, not, it's not that it's about the money, it's just like, it's not your item, bro, like, you know? Great, now none of us can watch TV. That's my TV! Anyways, second thing is my boiler here blew up while I was gone and my neighbor only turned off the water about six hours later. Uh, that right there is what looks like surface mold. Um, yeah, there was water all in the garage and these houses are built, you know, specifically rain or waterproof. That way water doesn't get in if there's a hurricane outside or something like that, which also means that water doesn't get out. So yeah, as you can tell, a lot of things started rusting everywhere. My tools, like the top of this, like, bro, there's a lot of rust everywhere. That was not rusty. None of that stuff was rusty. So, <laughs> it's life. Let's get to assembling this thing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start with the front bumper. Just because it has so much components that go into the front bumper and just to free up some space in my head, like all those parts, all the parts in this box, grill and more parts go into this front bumper. Now when rebuilding a car, personally what I do is I try to declutter my head by doing things I know what to do. For example, like I know exactly all the components that go into here. I'm going to put this together and then set that aside as an assembly, knowing that once I get this fully assembled, I can just slide it on and everything will be good. Now thinking about it, I probably should not be in the garage with all this mold. I mean, something happens then. Whew, you guys know why. <laughs> All right, boys, so look at this. Front bumper is fully assembled. It is the next morning, because last night, I had a plumber come out here and fix the water heater. So now we got a new water heater, everything's working. We're back to operating and running temps. Now, I went ahead and set the gaps on this fender. Right here, it's a bolt I need to put in, um, and that's gonna get tightened in, and it's gonna be all even perfectly throughout the whole entire fender. Went ahead and set the front end gaps, so that gap looks spot on. And now this one looks spot on. These Audis A7, S7, and RS7s, they have a funny little gap over here because the way the headlight and the way that the bumper and everything mounts, so it's kind of funny here, but I got it as perfect as I can. That one there and that one there. So I'm happy with everything. Let's go ahead and install the headlights. Um, cool thing about this car though, is you can install the headlights and then you can adjust the headlight gaps once the bumper is on. So you can make it fit even better once everything's all together. So that's really cool. Let's go ahead and put those on. All right, well, this is the hard part for two reasons. First of all, I'm by myself. Second of all, it's a aftermarket Chinese bumper. And I guess a bonus reason is because just the Audi A7, RS7, S7 front end is just so weird how it puts on. I don't know, I hate it every single time, but let's do it. I gotta make sure all the connections are here. Everything plugged in. Boom, boom, pow. So what I did is I put the screws in here and here, that way the bumper doesn't fall off. And now I'm gonna go ahead and attach the rest of it. This is looking insane. Look at that. 
<sighs> time to bolt it down and get all the gaps set up. And now the last thing, besides uh, installing two PMS sensors into the tires, but the last thing from my end is doing the fender liners. Woohoo! The worst thing I absolutely hate doing. Let's get it all done. All right, guys, well, fourth RS7 is officially complete, and out of all the RS7s, this one is by far my favorite. Now, the only downside to this RS7 is the aftermarket bumper on the front, which is resulting in a little bit of a gap right there. I tried my absolute best to make it fit the best. I've grinded it down, edged down the bumper to make it look as perfect and OEM as possible, and that was my best. This side looks perfect. The front, pow, wow, looks amazing here and here so all that looks good but let's go ahead and do a quick walk around around the rs7 and guys this thing just turned out absolutely spectacular went ahead and repaired the rocker panel damage over there fenders new one uh the rear had no damage whatsoever put on the stock rims on it the only thing that i would want to change on this car right now is well the only thing i would contemplate changing are the wheels because the stock wheels they look good but i do know that with some <laughs> aftermarket wheels this thing can look absolutely incredible um let's go ahead and check out the interior i went ahead and got this thing detailed it's looking super clean look at this yeah literally thirty-four thousand miles i got all mint not a single issue back here it's looking spectacular i don't know what happened here but yeah that's actually supposed to be this way i think i was too lazy i think i just threw it in and didn't clip it in but anyways there you go fixed so got all that done i want to show you guys the engine bay and after that we can go and enjoy this 718 i think horsepower beast crackles pops down pipe i mean it's got it all I am missing these clips. I ordered them from Germany. I ordered them specifically because they have Audi logos on them. I didn't want to put some random clips in there, but besides that, look at that. Woo wee. That's it boys. Another one bites the dust. Absolutely insane. Now, let's actually go ahead and enjoy this car. It's absolutely insane. I do want to mention that if you guys enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. If you guys want to support, click that link, cop yourself some merch or something. We may have a giveaway going. So you might have a chance to win a pretty sick rig with just a simple entry. So look at this. Hey, oh, there you go. Now the lights are on <laughs> they didn't turn on. Look at this. Yes, sir. Not a single light on the dashboard. And now put this sucker into dynamic. Yes, right there. S got turned on, crackle and pops are on and... Oh my. What is going on? That is dangerously fun and loud. <sighs> All right. You know what?
what? I'm gonna do a little launch right here. A little launch right here. <sighs> Let's see. Let's probably turn that traction off. Oh. Wow, 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 wow. All right, we're going back to quiet because that is a very easy way to get in trouble. I was not expecting that. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed it, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. There's no way I can end off this video without showing you guys what an outside little flyby sounds of this RS7. Dude, it is insane. I was not expecting it, and maybe it's amplified like crazy because we're between two big warehouses, but this just sounds so good. It's, I don't know, words, I can't put it into words. Look at this. <laughs> this is gonna be wild. Let's hope the mic, mic picks up all the noise. Let's see how, how much it lifts in the front. Oh, not much. That's unreal. All right, one more. He's gonna do one more for sure. Oh, he's coming in. Oh. All right, we're, we're done. We're done. Now I hope you guys enjoy that because, is he coming again? Don't tell me he's coming again. No way, no way. Oh, no, he's not, good. Alrighty boys. Insane. That right there is not in sport mode, so it didn't backfire. In sport mode, it backfires like crazy.